Greetings, everybody. Welcome back. It's uh, it's Friday, and uh, it is the... Uh, wait, what day is this? It's the fourth day. The fourth... I think this is the fourth day. We're playing Ether 1. Yeah, yeah. Four days. Sounds good to me. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back. I uh, hope everybody has had a, uh, a pleasant 24 hours since we last spoke. Last night's... Last night's stream was a thing of epicness. Uh, had a lot of fun. Got through. Uh, got through the industrial area of the game, which is uh, man, that thing is it's no motherfucking joke, pal. And uh, it was really cool. I, I I had solved a lot of the puzzles there in my first playthrough back when I was reviewing the game, and um, but there was a couple I hadn't. And with uh, with a little bit of cleverness on my part and a lot of cleverness on the part of the the, the mighty axe heads watching at the time we prevailed so um, we're gonna pick up where we uh, where we left off last night and we're gonna see how far how far we can get through all this we are currently we are currently in the uh, we're in the village we go back to the case here let's see we've got half of our projectors restored we got all the ones at the harbor um, We got um, we got all the ones at the industrial center. Got the one at Devlin. So it looks like in the village we're gonna have five. And then there's a uh, there's another area of the game that uh, we haven't quite made it to yet. The uh, that would be the the Brimcliff Mines and uh, when. When we interviewed uh, James Burton, one of the developers at uh, White Paper Games, who created Ether One, he said that was more of an Easter egg. He said a lot of people finish the game and never go there. But uh, me, being the completionist whore that I am, that ain't gonna stand, man. So anyway, for right now, though, we got five projectors somewhere here in the village that we're going to uh, we're going to be looking at uh, putting back together, and so that's going to be uh, quite a few puzzles that we're going to be sorting through. And I, for one. I'm ready to get started. So let's uh, let's let's do this, shall we? What do we got here? Now this uh, this section of the game I have not played through as much as the other two. I've only I've only been through this area of the game one time. And it wasn't the most thorough one time over, if you, uh, you catch my meaning. So uh, this is going to be uh, this is going to be interesting for me. There's going to be a lot here that I probably missed the first time, and I'm going to be trying to um, trying to work it all out this time. So let's uh, let's see. For those uh, for those who have not watched me play Ether One before. A little bit of background on the game. This is a, a first-person adventure title, uh, again from uh, White Paper Games in Manchester in the UK. Uh, just came out this week, and it is a um, it's it's a game that uh, that has a lot of uh, a lot of really interesting things going on in terms of the narrative, in terms of the gameplay. It's a uh, it's a it's a puzzle game primarily. Although interestingly enough, um, there's that uh, there's that clock again from the Batman animated series. Interestingly enough, uh, the way that the game is structured, it is in fact possible to play through the game without solving any of the puzzles. If you just do some exploration, you can uh, you can basically pick up the I, I suppose you know it's kind of a Maybe maybe a checkpoint is is a good way of thinking about it. But um, you can kind of explore through the game, uh, go through, uh, hit the various checkpoints, and you can progress that way without doing the puzzles. The puzzles are optional, but uh, man, who would ever want to play this game and not do the puzzles? They're so fun. Um, 
the, they're also very unforgiving, which is simultaneously what makes them fun, and also uh, really, 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 really frustrating at times. Because uh, as I as I have said uh, when playing this game uh, earlier in the week, it does not hold your hand very much. This is a game that uh, puts a lot of things out in front of you and just really leaves it up to you to sort through, which can be which can be a little frustrating. But it's also so rewarding. It's so rewarding when you do. When you do uh, finally find the solution, there was a really epic moment last night uh, when we were trying to. I say we because it, you know it wasn't just me, but uh, me and a lot of people in the chat room watching the live stream uh, were trying to find the solution to uh, these last couple of puzzles that uh, I was doing in the industrial area. And you know, it, like there was this, this moment where I made like this just ridiculous leap of logic. Where even as I was saying it, I was like, "Oh no, come on, that can't be it." And it was like, "Oh crap, that's it." And um, th those eureka moments, those eureka moments are so great. And you know, if if video games, um, if video games are, I suppose you know, any any medium can do this, but uh, video games especially, uh, there is kind of a um, there's a bit of a vicarious thrill aspect of video games. Uh, you know, the game making you feel like you're really good at something that uh, you probably couldn't even attempt in real life. And uh, Ether One does the same thing. It makes you feel really clever. It makes you feel like you could be uh, a Sherlock Holmes or, or, or a Batman, a, a, a very, very, uh, a very, very sharp detective. I, I love, I love, uh, you know, puzzles and figuring, figuring things out. And uh, so this game is just, man, it's just, it's so tuned to my taste. And and there are a couple of moments where I feel like, oh, it'd be great if, it'd be great if the game gave me a little bit more this or a little bit more that. But I mean, really. The fact that it doesn't really give you anything, uh, the payoff is so big. It's just so big when uh, when you finally do, when you finally do find the solution. All right, so I'm going to read this note here. Chris, yeah, uh, Chris. I'm trying to remember what, what's Chris's last name? Fletcher. Uh, there's a Chris that's mentioned. In um, in one of the uh, one of the other notes, one of the earlier notes that uh, that we found back in the uh, back in the harbor. I apologize for what just happened and for what we've done, but I did tell you to be gentle in there. There's no use blaming each other, though. It's clearly no one's fault. I just hope you're okay. And now that you have the artifact, ready to press on. Our goal hasn't changed, and we best move along. All right, so as I was telling you, uh, you can play this game and, in fact, not solve the puzzles. To progress through the narrative, all you really need to do is you need to explore and locate these ribbons. There are eight in each area, these you know, memory ribbons. When I was a young doctor, there was a lot that I thought I knew, and there was little I wouldn't have done to prove myself. Ambition, something I had in abundance, and has always pushed me to the far corners of science. I'm aware that some of these procedures are a little experimental in nature, yet surely it's right to sacrifice a few for the majority. Sounds rather ominous, doesn't it? Uh, Phyllis is an interesting character. Uh, you know, this this disembodied voice uh, instructing you, telling you, uh, telling you what to do, where to go, and um, in the in the same. Or, or probably because of Gladys, I don't, uh, I don't really trust her. Um, so, I, gu I suppose maybe a bit of a refresher might be in order for uh, those who are just. Actually, I'm going to put that on a higher shelf. Uh, for those who are just joining us, who have not seen anything of the game before, the uh, the premise of the game is that your character, who thus far has only been referred to as Restorer, uh, your character is, I suppose a. Uh, uh, a mental healthcare professional who is working in uh, in some sort of ex with some sort of experimental technology that uh, has allowed you to dive into the mind of a a woman named Jean who is suffering from dementia and uh, ostensibly your goal by diving into her mind is to repair uh, her memory repair the uh, the fractured parts of her memory restore her and um, there's a uh, 
there's some other forces uh, apparently at work. Phyllis is out in the real world. Uh, she's uh, she's the scientist who set all this up. But she's also got people that she that she answers to uh, that ha- have been referred to as observation. Observation called down and they want this. Observation called down and wants to know this. That kind of thing. Uh, so there is a little bit of a a little bit of a, of a matrix quality, I suppose. There's a there's a real world out there somewhere. Uh, and, but the world that we're playing through, the world of the game, this is the uh, the psyche. These are this world has been put together from the memories of the patient gene, who we are trying to cure. All right, chat room's alive. Let's see. Uh, is it normal that there's a black square at the top? Is your webcam accidentally off? I have black. Uh, maybe cam. Yes. Uh, for some reason, let me see. Uh, let me check the. Yeah. For some reason, although Shadow Play never used to do this, but for some reason, every time. I switch on shadow play now. It always tries to switch on the cam by default. Uh and um and I don't know why. I don't have a camera connected and I don't have that I like I I've checked the options in shadow play a few times and I don't have a I don't understand why it's happening. But anyway, yeah, uh so there is a uh, there's a black square in the upper right. That's my bad. I just got to remember to turn that off now from now on. So anyway, thank you for the uh heads up. Uh, what's up? Hey, by the way, I finished last night's stream earlier today and noticed that you might have typoed the safe code in the mill manager's office. Okay, what, well, let, I'm trying to, I tried like three different codes. Uh, what, uh, which, which of the codes might I have typoed? I think I tried, um, I think I tried 1909, I think I tried 0427, I think I tried 1845. Because there's that sign outside. Yeah, Chris Fletcher. That's what I th- I knew it. Yeah. Okay, let's uh let's go upstairs and do a little bit more exploring. Snakes and ladders, <laughs> sweet. Which, of course, you know, could also be a snakes and barrels reference from Metalocalypse, Pickles old band, which is just awesome on so many levels. Battle McStruggle back again. What's going on? Let's take this back to the case. Never know when it might be. Never know when it might come in handy. Again, for a guy who loves puzzles and a guy who's a bit of a pack rat, this game is this game is dangerous. Oh, a pretty rocking horse. Uh, let's see. Um, how do you pronounce your name? Uh, Malvia. Malvia's. Vitrer. I've actually finished almost all the puzzles in the game. In case you need a hint later on, if I can remember, there are so many puzzles. Uh, you're not kidding. There are a lot of puzzles. And uh, as far as hints go, we shall see. Uh, I do enjoy. I do enjoy the challenge of figuring them out. Although one of the uh, one of the the big puzzles from last night, I was really really stumped on. And somebody in chat uh, made the suggestion that broke through and and allowed us to complete. The industrial zone with five out of five projectors solved. MV. All right, that sounds uh, that sounds awesome. Uh, jazz. All I can hear coming from this room is his damn jazz record. Yes. Nothing, nothing, and more nothing. All right, the search continues. Same prescription, picked up a dozen of those. 
Uh, let's see. Human Metal is asking, am I the only one who is experiencing severe hiccups on the stream? Uh, everybody sound off. How's the quality? How's the stream going for everybody? Is uh, Are we having... Are we having problems overall, or is that just human metal? 